Otto, how should Jimmy G feel about Kyle Shanahan's praise of Trey Lance? Uh, one, not surprised. And two, that his days are numbered. Uh, I think it's uh, what there's a, qu a quote, that which I feared the most has befallen me. That which Jimmy G feared the most is about to befall him. You mean BSing me, but go ahead, <laughs> befall me. Okay. Big dog, it's simple, man. It's mm -hmm. like you already knew what time it was when they traded two first-round picks and moved up with their other first-round pick Facts. to draft a quarterback at the number three position. That's why these words shouldn't shock you. They don't shock me. Think about who the 49ers have drafted in their last two first rounds. Nick Bosa, probably the best pass rusher under the age of 25, and Brandon Ayuk, one of their best offensive receiving threats. And they also gave up two first-rounders in a third round. Think about who they drafted in the third round just three drafts ago, 2018. Maybe it was four drafts ago. Fred Warner, first-team All-Pro mm, linebacker, geez. just rated the second-best linebacker in the game to Bobby Wagner. So knowing what the 49ers can acquire with their draft picks, they still sacrificed that to get Trey Lance. Jimmy G, you knew what it was, big dog. But now you got to hear it. Like, now you got to hear uh, your coach salivate over this young ah. hippa snapper. You got to hear your hippa coach snapper. just sit there and sing his praises. I think Jimmy G's worst fears are truly coming to fruition. It was one thing when you saw the action of them drafting Trey Lance. It's a whole other thing now hearing the words. Yeah, I mean, look, the writing's on the wall, and all Kyle, Kyle Shanahan doing right now is just reading the script, and we get it. But I'm, I'm upset at you, and, and I'm upset at Kyle Shanahan as well but I don't like him like I like you. So I'm going to talk to you first. <laughs> Talking about it's not shocking. You've been desensitized, my brother, because this is shocking that, damn, y'all gave up all that to go get Trey Lance. I don't care about that as much as I care about we are on air. He went to rookie minicamp and two days of OTAs, and that's how glowingly you talk about him? Has he even had a Taste of the NFL yet? Has he had young Wiley get after his ass a couple times around the corner? He has not tasted one drop of the NFL. But, oh, my God, the way that he is out there commanding people. This is when I knew he was pouring too much damn syrup on these pancakes. <laughs> he went out there and said guys have gravitated to him. Last time I checked, the only dudes that we gravitate to are the ballers, proven guys. Other than that, you just could be a comic in that locker room. You could be funny, have a great personality. Yeah, we're going to be around you when you're telling them jokes, but gravitate towards? I don't know. That, to me, feels a little more than normal. It sounds like propaganda, and I know it starts off with pro, P-R-O, but it's propaganda. He is out there basically saying, look, we drafted him high. We know we're going to play him. We know we're going to insert him. We know we're going to hijack Jimmy G. So let me do this for the proper reception, not only of our players, but more importantly, our fan base. Because when we switch a rule this, I want y'all to be like, oh, I've heard nothing but great things about him. And uh, I'm not rooting against Trey Lance to the little bit. But you know what? Part of me is saying, let's see this not work out because – I want to see if Kyle Shanahan was telling the truth all the time. Because it just sounds like an unproven rookie who has thrown the fewest attempts at a D1 AA school and day four just got the most complex system. <laughs> Shut up. You ain't got to lie, Craig. You ain't got to lie, Kyle Shanahan. I've been there before. Got to bring in Fox NFL analyst Bucky Brooks. So, Bucky, how should Jimmy G feel about Kyle Shanahan snaking him for Trey Lance? He shouldn't have any feelings about this because this isn't even about Trey Lance. I think if you're Jimmy Garoppolo, I think you got to go back and since we love quotes, he has to take this quote and let it really be embedded in his mind. Be so good, they can't ignore you. Mm. Steve Martin said that. He told that the to young comment because ultimately Jimmy Garoppolo is in control of this situation. He has to control the controllable. And there's two things that he can control, his preparation and his performance. The reason why the 49ers want to move on for Jimmy Garoppolo, we've heard John Lynch said, we've heard Kyle Shanahan said, he plays really well when he's available. He hasn't been available. Missed 23 games. So the injuries have been a thing. So what has Jimmy Garoppolo done this offseason? He's added some weight. Mm. He's tried to make himself better prepared to deal with the rigors of the position. Then the other part of it is the performance. Knowing the playbook, knowing exactly what's asked of him because we can say a lot of things about Jimmy Garoppolo, but he went 22 and eight as a starter. As long as Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't give them a reason for them to go to Trey Lance, he'll be the starting quarterback. He has to control the part that he control, be so good. They can't <laughs> ignore him and they won't replace him. 
he does that, he has nothing to worry about. It's a wrap, Bucky Brooks. All that stuff sounded good, and that was phenomenal <laughs> coaching jargon. Hey, I'm not at all mad at the phenomenal coaching mm -hmm. jargon. I just think that it's irrelevant in this situation. Bucky, Jimmy G should feel used. Uh, Ooh. You know when you end up in one of those <laughs> relationships or friendships that you know is going to expire. You're still friend by happenstance. Y'all knew each other back when you were in high school. You went to college together. But now that you're in the working <clears> world, you're only friends because you've always been friends. Mm. You know there's an expiration date on that friendship. That's what's going on with Jimmy G and the 49ers. There's an expiration date on your starting quarterback position. Yep. The 49ers are using Jimmy G as long as they can still benefit from the friendship. But when they can no longer benefit, even minimally, it's out with Jimmy G. It's off with his head, so to speak. So Jimmy G should truly feel used because the 49ers are just playing with Jimmy G, big dog. Yeah, Jimmy G will keep you around until Trey Lance is ready. You just keeping a bed warm. You just keeping a seat hot. I've used this example before. I went to an award show prior, and they had the seat warmers. You don't mm. actually own a ticket to the, to the play. You mm. don't actually own a ticket to the award show. But you are sitting in the seat until the person who actually owns that ticket arrives only for the sake of the cameras. Jimmy G is sitting in the starting mm. quarterback position seat until Trey Lance actually arrives only for the sake of the cameras. Jimmy G is simply a seat holder. He's not actually the starting quarterback for the 49ers. Man, that's a beautiful take. You ain't never lie. Godly, I love working with you. Yeah, they, they ain't friends. They associates by association. I hate that when you just be clicking it with somebody. Like, every time I left the team, it was only like two or three dudes I really talked to. And everybody else, I was like, dog, I was like, y'all boy. And as soon as you get traded, a cut or somewhere that's else. It. Peace. Happens at other networks as well. Acho, if you ever go somewhere else with your old celebrity butt, you ain't gonna talk to me no more. I know how you act. You're gonna be, uh, Marcellus was just my associate by association. Don't <laughs> treat me like that, Acho. I ain't a seat warmer, damn it. Let's talk about this situation. <laughs> what a snake in Jimmy GQ. Yeah, I'm gonna call it for what it is. Kyle Shanahan out there campaigning right now. We all have played the game before. Come on, y'all. When do rookies, when they ain't even put the pads on, get this much love from that? Head coach. Head coach be like, yeah, he looking good. We'll see. All right, he, he, he's grasping the, the concepts. We'll see. But he didn't say that. He said, man, they gravitating to him. He's the leader. Wink, wink. Vote for me, Kyle Shanahan. And I'm going to tell you who Kyle Shanahan is in terms of running for this campaign of now I can be the genius as a head coach that I was as an offensive coordinator because a lot got lost in translation. But y'all just assume he's the same head coach as he was an OC. Oh, contraire, mon frere. 49ers have finished last in the division twice. Third once in the four seasons with Kyle Shanahan. I wonder the one good year they had. Jimmy GQ. Okay. Only made the playoffs once in those four seasons and been at the bottom half of the league in points per game three of the four seasons. I wonder the one season they weren't. Jimmy GQ healthy. Look, Jimmy GQ did this to himself to a large part because of his injuries, because of his lack of availability. I get all that. But damn, coach, you put a little too much mayonnaise on this sandwich, homie, because I don't like you buttering the bread of some guy that we don't even know if he's ready yet. Like, this just feels like Jordan Love 2.0, where everybody kept telling us, oh, they moved up because Jordan Love ready to play, ready to play. And now you hear sound bites, they're like, he has a long way to go. Trey Lance, I'm rooting for you. Don't get this twisted. I'm not rooting for Kyle Shanahan to be lying to the whole entire group, but it sounds like he's going to prop you in this situation. So... I hope Trey Lance works out, but if it don't, ooh we, because he's starting to sound like a PPP, if y'all know what I mean. You know, Marcellus, I love being on this show where I can debate and go back and forth with you and Acho, because it allows me to use some of the things that I've learned along the way in class. And the one thing that you can do in an argument, you can make it personal. So I'm going to personalize this argument yes. when I talk about Jimmy Garoppolo. I know you spent time with the Chargers. I know you are maybe a close friend or a confidant with Drew Brees. I'm going to use Drew Brees as the example because Drew Brees had to deal with this when he was in San Diego. They drafted Phillip Rivers, fourth overall. They basically were saying, hey, Drew Brees, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just not going to work out. We're going to get the young guy in here and ready. But you know what Drew Brees did? Yeah. He played at a Pro Bowl level. You know what they had to do? They had to pause for a minute before they could hand it over to Phillip Rivers. So Jimmy Garoppolo has that opportunity if he controls it because – as you so eloquently made the case for myself, when we've seen the 49ers' success, who's been the starting quarterback? Jimmy Garoppolo. 
So this is actually an opportunity for it to be a win-win scenario for the 49ers. Jimmy Garoppolo is motivated to play at a high level because 31 other teams are looking at him and his performance so he can parlay his play into another big payday. The 49ers can benefit because their starting quarterback who has taken them to a Super Bowl could take him to another Super Bowl. So that's why Jimmy Garoppolo can ignore all this other stuff that's being said and go on. And by the way, Kyle Shanahan is doing what I would like to see Matt LaFleur do. How about show a little confidence and say it with your chest mm. that there's another quarterback in the building that can play? So I applaud both sides for this. Because Jimmy Garoppolo is going to ball out, and we know that Trey Lance is going to get the support of his coaches to eventually allow him to ball out as well. Man, say it again, Bucky. We over here echoing right now. We in our own vacuum, our own echo chamber. Damn it, I think we're correct on this topic right here. Because if you look at it simply... I just don't know rookies that get this much praise on air. Like in tank tops and shorts. Oh, the hair was blowing in his hair. The wind was blowing in his hair. Oh, he looked amazing. You should have seen him in the huddle the way he put his mouthpiece in. Like, what the hell? Like, this ain't football, Kyle Shanahan. But, you know, I used to always struggle when they said you can't lose your job because of injury. And I was like, I don't know about that. Especially in San Francisco. Ask Alex Smith about that with Kyle and Kaepernick. And now you're going to see a situation, basically, Jimmy G, you lost your job. You lost your status because of injury. But then, let's keep it uniform. Let's keep it objective. If that's the reason, okay. Uh, but we're going to do that for Raheem Moster, uh, eight games. Tevin Coleman, eight games. Debo Samuel, nine games. Brandon, uh, yeah. ah, four games. George Kittle, eight games. Nick Bosa, 14 in his second year, young boy. Mm. Solomon Thomas, 14. D4, 15. Richard Sherman, 11. Oh, everybody ain't losing their job because of injury. So my last point is this, because I know I'm hot on this and I got to get off of this. I ain't mad at you, 49ers and Kyle Shanahan, for you trying to go get it. Like, we want to get us a stable, available quarterback to take us back to the promised land. You can get it, but how are you going to get it? I was a person that grew up around a lot of people that wanted it, but uh, how they went about it was the issue. And I used to sit there on my island, sit there silently, and sometimes I would say it and no one cared about what I was saying. I saw all those gangsters, I saw all them drug dealers, 16 years old with a 5.0 Mustang rag, and I'm like, yeah, he got it, but how'd he get it? Kyle Shanahan, be careful how you get it, big dog, because it may come back to haunt you.